these uh, next few slides that um, it's about uh, classification and a few other things. What happened, Robert Whittaker, back in 1960s, he proposed that um, the uh, eukaryotic cells, which you're going to study right now, that's eukaryotic cells, protista, they evolved from prokaryotic cells back there. And then eukaryotic cells, some of them evolved to animals, some of them evolved to plants, and some of them evolved to fungi. Okay, that's the old five kingdom classification, and they said how these five kingdoms are related to each other. Uh, kingdom uh, 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 Monera, Kingdom Protista, Kingdom Animalia, Fungi, and Plant. Uh, these three kingdoms, they evolved separately. One that did not evolve to the next one, this one did not evolve to that one. They evolved separately to, uh, from Protista, to animal, to plant, to fungi. I hope I'm making some sense. Okay. Okay, then the next slide. Uh, classification. Uh, this is something you should know, I hope, for the rest of semester. Uh, uh, we are going to harp on it. We are going to know there are 1.5 million species. Carlos Vineos was the uh, father of classification. He said there are, let's give each organism on planet Earth, uh, give it two names, name of genus and species, and that's what we have to know uh, for the rest of semester, genus, species, binomial nomenclature, uh, based on comparative anatomy, but nowadays they use DNA, uh, rRNA um, for classification, and also comparative anatomy. Uh, um, then uh, the levels of classification are far as, as uh, uh, a kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Okay, King Paul came over. King Paul, easy to remember it. King Paul came over for good sex. Okay, so easy to remember. <laughs> how, how to write a scientific name? First word is genus, second word, uh, initial capital, second word is species, all small letters. And that's the way I'm hoping you would write it during exam. During exam, you cannot italicize. Your handwriting cannot be italicized. Only typed words are italicized. So how do you do it during the exam? Well, underlining. You have to underline scientific names if you write on a genus species for me. For example, uh, the scientific name for human is Homo sapien. Homo is the name of the genus. Sapien is the name of species. Capital H, small s. I hope I'm making some sense. And then during exam, if you write down small h, small s, I'll take points off. Or you don't underline, I'll take points off. Because you're supposed to do that, you follow that. And then uh, this is italicized gorilla. Gorilla is the scientific name for, guess what, what animal? Gorilla. gorilla. You'll see that sometimes uh, for, sure, for shipworm. Uh, I forgot now. For ship, gorilla, gorilla is the, the scientific name for it. Uh, some organisms have three names, subspecies they call that, okay, so you have a genus, species, subspecies, for example, Trypanosoma brucei, Rodensiense, Trypanosoma brucei, Gambiense, Trypanosoma brucei, brucei, okay, so you have that sometimes. In a sentence you might see this, um, Trypanosoma, instead of uh, the author, the person who is writing it, instead of writing all three of them, he write down SP. It means I am talking about all of the three, all three species. Okay, Trypanosoma, I'm talking about all of them. Uh, gorilla, Gorilla, uh, after you write it the first time, the second time you can write it down capital G dot Gorilla. Or, or uh, italicize, either one. Okay, so those are possible. You can do that during exam. If you, of course, you have to write it out first time, spell it all out, try Panasoma, all of it, and then second time you can write on T dot Brucei. <coughs> I hope I'm making sense. Okay, uh, Trichomonas vaginalis, T dot vaginalis, or T vaginalis. Uh, phylogeny is based on homology, not analogy, kind of old information. And then um, uh, Robert Whitaker, I said what he said. He proposed the five kingdom, the evolution of the five kingdom where they came about, and so on and so forth. Human, this is what I expect you to know for, <clears throat> for exam purposes. Uh, human belongs to um, uh, 
Kingdom Animalia, and then Phyla. There are uh, 33 Phyla. This is old, but still, just you don't have to memorize the numbers. I'm just giving you what is a big nutshell. Uh, yeah, there are a few phyla in animal kingdom, and uh, Chordata is one of them. There are a few subphyla in phylum uh, Chordata, Tetrapoda. There are classes, several classes in the phylum Chordata. It's Mammalia, we belong to Mammalia, and subclass uh, Thera. And order primates, we are primate families, homundiae, and there are three uh, genera, plural of genus is genera, plural of phylum is phyla, the rest is pretty much the same. And then species, we are uh, sapiens, the other two species are extinct. So I expect you might ask you what order human belongs to, or what class human belongs to. You should know order primate uh, class. Um, mammalia, so on and so forth. Not very hard. Uh, the the uh, genera, we are gen genus Homo, and then we are in the family Homundiae. Okay, um, then let's move on to Protista. That was a short breakdown of what you need to know for the rest of the semester about classification. Um, for Protista, you, do, you, you are going to study uh, the phylum. No classes, uh, but genus species. Okay, no orders, nothing like that. For there are, there, don't say they are not. There are, but we are not going to study them. Okay, you have to know what 10, 15, five, uh, phyla. You said uh, earlier. But anyhow, uh, animals uh, like Protista, life on Earth began about 3.5 billion years ago with uh, prokaryotic cells. I told you the story, or it was that afternoon now. Mother Earth through a party, and the uh, first organisms came to the party were bacteria. They came to help Mother Earth to fix up the meal, uh, and so on and so forth. At the end, human arrived at the party. And guess what, about midnight or so, when the party was over, uh, human arrived, and guess what human did? They trashed the party. They destroyed everything. That's what we're doing. We're, we came the most recent to the planet Earth, and we are destroyed. Okay. But anyway, uh, Protista, uh, Protozoa and Sub-Kingdom, ah, uh, don't worry about this, this is still, they're debating and arguing, and what we are not gonna go over it. Animal-like, that's what they mentioned, they do not have cell wall. Cell wall is made up of what? Cellulose, by one information. And um, they do not have cellulose, as we know of it. Uh, in some way, they are, some of them are motile, and they ingest their food, either by uh, oral group, as I mentioned them, you remember this, oral group, or by phagocytosis. So they ingest their food, and that's why uh, they are animal. They <coughs> and then we will discuss these phyla, I guess, uh, main characteristics. Am I going forward or backward? Okay, they're unicellular, they're microscopic, the ones that we study in here. Uh, they have no general layer, specialized organelles. You know, they have the common or organelle like nucleus, mitochondria, uh, Golgi apparatus, some of them. Uh, what else? And the plasmic reticulum, they have those general ones, but, but they have some specialized one that other organisms do not have. For example, one ex what is an example of one is apical complex. You're going to see that. Some species, they have apical uh, complex, uh, which we'll talk about it. Oh, this apical, I need some, um, some black ones, guys. So it, it, I got it, I got it. Apical complex is a specialized organelle. I'm, I mean, you all know what apical complex. It's a specialized organelles that some have, not everyone has, not every species has. Uh, free living, mutualism, commensalism, parasitism. Um, we do have example of each one of them in the lab on your slide, except uh, commensalism. We do not have enthermiba gingivalis, which is found in everybody's mouth. We do not have an example of it. But the way a little bit of evolution of these organisms, what happened at the beginning of the time 
these organisms were parasitism. You know, uh, parasitism, you should know the term symbiosis. You learned that in bio one. Symbiosis, it means two different species. It has to be two different species living together. And one, at least one of them, metabolically depending on the other one. So you can see a mere pregnant mother, that's an example of, good example of symbiosis. No, it's not a good example of symbiosis. Yes, the fetus metabolically depends on the mother. Am I right? But that's not a good definition. It's not a good example of symbiosis. Why? Because they are same species. As I said, two different species. I hope I'm making some sense. So like tapeworm and you. Tapeworm is a different species in your gut than you. A tick on your body, is that right? It's a different species than you. Two different species, one of them, the tick, metabolically depending on another one. So that's the, that's the best definition of symbiosis I can give you. Now there are different types of symbiosis. There are three types. Parasitism, mutualism, commensalism. How did they evolve, if you think about evolution? Parasitism evolved to commensalism. Imagine this would be 500 million years ago. This would be 250 million years ago. And then finally, uh, mutualism, which is present now. What happened during paras uh, parasitism, one organism was benefiting and the other one organism was dying. Right? Parasites, what did they do to their host? They kill them. Eventually, malaria. Six million people or so on planet Earth each year are dying of malaria. Okay? So they kill their host. When they die, when the host dies, what happens to the parasite? No? When, when I'm dead, how they can move on to the next one. Before I'm dead, they have to move. And they learn that, to do that. But they die. The parasite dies also. If I die, the parasites in me will die too. Am I making some sense? Okay, so one, if the host dies, the parasite will die also. So over a period of time, over a period of time, they learn, the parasites learn not to harm their host. For example, one is harm, and the other one, how can I show this? Let's show it by negative, you die. And the other one is not harm. For example, you have entamoeba gingivalis in your mouth. They consider it as a, com a commensal. It means it will not harm you. It just take the food from the food that you eat, and they do not harm you. So it's called entamoeba gingivalis. But again, uh, uh, these are all can be debated questions. And tell me about gingivalis in your mouth. If you don't keep a good hygiene, you don't brush your teeth, you don't keep up, they can cause gingivitis disease of your gum. They can't. Okay. So uh, the other one is mutualism. They both benefit. Mutualistic relationship, they call it. Both, like termite gut. If you have a termite that goes <coughs> in the wood, what happens with a termite? Uh, inside of the gut of termite, you do have slide of it, is trichonympha, one of the species in the gut of the termite. And trichonympha, it breaks down that wood, they ate to <clears throat> glucose molecules, so both the termite can benefit from it, and also the trichonympha can benefit from it. So they both benefit from it, and that is called mutualism. So over a period of time, the organism learn not to harm their host, to benefit them. To benefit, and that's what uh, I have to say about evolution of symbiosis. Okay, some cells, some have pseudopods, some have flagella, cilia, some have, and so on and so forth. All type of nutrient. Uh, the two common ones that you're familiar with is autotrophic and heterotrophic. Autotrophic ones is the one that the organisms make their own food by photosynthesis. Okay, and then heterotrophic ones they engulf. They eat just like us. We are, we human are heterotroph. We human are heterotroph. Aquatic and terrestrial, of course, asexual and sexual reproduction. 
Um, it happens in Protista, and we'll talk about it. The most of the organelles that the uh, other mitochondria is the power plant of the cell. It makes ATP. We talked about it. You already know that. In the plasmic reticulum, there are two types of them: smooth in the plasmic reticulum, they do not have ribosomes, and rough in the plasmic reticulum, they have ribosomes. Rough in the plasmic reticulum is responsible for protein synthesis and so on and so forth. In the plasmic, smooth in the plasmic reticulum is responsible for fat synthesis and other functions uh, they have. But those are the Golgi apparatus. It package the cell material like a uh, packing plant, a uh, meat packing plant, if you would analogy. Vesicles, they are little um, membrane-bounded organism uh, structures that they move inside of the cell. Either one example you're familiar with is the neurotransmitters. You remember at the end of the axon knob, the vesicles inside of them have uh, acetylcholine. They come and they release acetylcholine into the synapse. Do you remember that? So vesicles, they have something inside of them and they move inside of the cell. Okay, um, the other one, chloroplast is responsible for making uh, food, photosynthesis, uh, you study that. Vacuoles, they store either waste or food material inside of the cell, or li liquid in some cases. Uh, endoplasm and ectoplasm, they are structures for locomotion of the organisms. So you do have them in the amoeba, the outside structure is called ectoplasm and the inside uh, is called endoplasm. Um, the, in the other model it's nicer, uh, it's, it's shown better. And of course inside of the animal right here is all cytoplasm. This is cytoplasm, then you have ectoplasm, endoplasm. This is pseudopod, it depends doing lab practical or what is the tape around. If the tape is around the whole thing, it's a pseudopod. But if the tape is right here, it's ectoplasm, the tape is a little bit inside. They're different colors. They color them for you on the both models. It's endoplasm. So usually, usually the organisms that have these ectoplasm and endoplasm are amoeba, usually. Locomotion, either by cilia, you learned that in bio one, uh, inside of cilia ariana, there is uh, nine plus two, is that right? Nine microtubules on the parameter and two in the center. Did you study that in bio one a little bit? Uh, so, and the way the cilia flagella moves is like your skeletal muscle. The head of the actin attaches to the myosin, uh, the head of the myosin attaches to the actin, uh, and they move almost same, almost same. We, we talked about a lot of analogy here. Pseudopod, they move, um, again, every textbook all the time, uh, they say it, but we don't use it as much. We don't, uh, I'm not going to go into detail of it. Transpatter and hyalin, ectoplasm, endoplasm is more granular and more fluid. Uh, cilium, flagellum uh, structures are right here. Cilium is singular, flagellum is singular, cilia is plural, flagella is plural. And right 9 plus 2, this is a um, transmission electron micrograph of it, uh, showing you guys 9 microtubules, 9 microtubules on the parameter and 2 in the center, just like the drawing in here. Okay, that's what 9 plus 2 structure is. Uh, protista, again, they can move by pseudopod. Uh, we talked about contractile vacuole a little bit. Um, Excretion and osmoregulation is by contractile vacuole. We talked about it. The contractile vacuole, uh, the small vesicles uh, join the contractile vacuole. These are <coughs> small vesicles. They move inside of the cell and they come and join the contractile vacuole. Contractile vacuole joins the outside and excrete the water. And then contractile vacuole moves inside. It's made up of phospholipid. This is made for the phospholipid. Cell membrane is made up of phospholipid. They get rid of uh, water. This is made up of phospholipid vesicles, right? So when they move, they join. Uh, again, the story is more complicated than what I'm talking about. Uh, if you take cell biology, you will know. Uh, but right here, they, they move and they dump the water into the contractile vacuum. The contractile vacuum combines to the cell membrane and get rid of water. A little bit more complex is 
right here, ampilla. In ciliated organisms, it is more complex than the other one. So you have excretory pores leads outside the, uh, what I'm talking about. Right here is a contractile vacuole. These are ampilla, and the excretory pore leads outside. This ampilla goes, uh, uh, push the water out when the uh, contractile vacuole, when the contractile vacuole squeeze, then push the water out. Yes? So there can only be one excretory pore? Usually one. it's one. One of them that is attached to the outside. The other ones, the other five, ten, what, what have you, is attached to uh, your endoplasmic reticulum. Okay? Uh, Ampula fills up and discharges the water to the outside. <coughs> right? One of them attached is called excretory pore, and the other ones are attached to endoplasmic reticulum. Okay? And uh, this is structure of cilia. We'll talk about it. Macronucleus, micronucleus. Nutrition, autotroph, heterotroph, uh, phagocytosis, lysosome. What do you think was the function of lysosome from bio one? They are what? Anybody? They are full of enzymes, and what do they do? What is the function of those enzymes in the lysosome? They break down other, like, for example, one example, the bacteria that your white blood cells engulf, the lysosome release enzymes to kill that bacteria. Food, other particles that we ingest, the cells ingest, lysosome break them down. Of course, if lysosome breaks all of a sudden, it kills the cell. That's what they call the nickname for lysosome is suicide bag of the cell. It can kill the cell. If they release all of the enzyme at once, we can kill the cells, so it's called suicide. Food vacuoles, they store food, um, exocytosis, <clears throat> the waste material. Cilia have uh, cytoproc uh, for uh, expulsion, so of the waste material right here, right here in this model, this is a cytoproc. It gets rid of the solid food. Okay, so they get rid of water by this system. We talked about it, and they get rid of solid material, waste solid. It's a waste material. They already had, went through metabolism. So they make waste. Don't you think that only you are the one in the morning make waste? They make waste too. I hope I'm not grossing out everybody. <laughs> oh, you have to. Everybody, they're dancing on campus. They're talking about politics and economics, and we're talking about poop and blood <laughs> and glory. Yes? What is it that uh, cytoproc. Cytoproc. And I showed it to you on the model right, right here. Okay. Yeah, if you're here about glory, you're not here about politics, economics. That's for those people. Over us is blood. <laughs> Pinocytosis, it means cell drinking. Is that right? Phagocytosis, it means uh, cell eating. Of course, these animals undergo cell. Uh, uh, reproduction, fission, uh, this is the best definition you're going to get for fission. Uh, cell multiplication process when more individuals are produced. Binary fission, two identical individuals are produced. Uh, we have that in protista a lot. Uh, budding, when one progeny is budding off, you might see it on your slides of um, uh, cilia. The slide of cilia, permisium, you will see that uh, multiple fission, it can happen, you will see that uh, there are two different types of multiple fission. When we talk about malaria, life cycle of malaria, these two terms come in handy. Sporogeny and schizogeny, or toxoplasma gondii, either one. When we talk about malaria, toxoplasma gondii, these two terms will come in handy. Uh, you should uh, get used to them, get to know them. And then, of course, for insistment and existment, these two terms, again, uh, will come in. Development of spores and sporozoites uh, with an oocyst. Um, cytokinesis is produced by several nuclear divisions. We'll come back to this. Sexual reproduction, isogametes, when the gametes are equal, same size, and isogametes, when the gametes are not equal size. In case of human, 
are a gamete is a type of anisogamete. They are not uh, they are not same size. Same gamete fertilization of individual gamete by another one. Uh, autogamy, gametic nuclei fuse uh, to form zygote within the same organism uh, that produced them. And this is, would be an example of uh, paramecium of Polemon slide. You will see that in paramecium. Conjugation, again, another one for paramecium, when two organisms come together and they exchange nuclear material. It's called conjugation. Uh, it is important. Uh, in biology for conjugation, bacteria do it, some bacteria do it, uh, some protista do it. Uh, when they're coming together and they exchange nuclear material, what is the advantage of that? What is good to exchange nuclear? We human, definitely, we human multiply by conjugation. We exchange nuclear material. What is the advantage of that? <coughs> Diversity of the organisms. So when the organisms are diverse, one disease, what Darwin said, natural selection. When a disease comes, it can wipe out this one, but this one will survive. Am I making some sense? So this one that survives will carry on the life. But if we are all clone of each other, that's why cloning is not good, they're opposing it. If we are all clone of each other, our genetic material, all of us are same, then what's gonna happen? If a disease comes, if a natural selection comes, we all die. That's why cloning is not good. Because eventually what cloning means, they are, we are going to be all genetically similar. When we are genetically similar, a tiger chase all of us and we cannot run fast. <laughs> He's going to eat all of us. <laughs> Natural selection. Okay. As simple as that. Okay. Uh, incessment, assessment. Make sure you read your textbook and um, uh, listen to what I have to say, formation of cysts, not in paramecium. Paramecium do not only go uh, in cysment. Uh, escape from the cyst is called excisment. Uh, is that all I have to say? Yeah. Okay. So what happens, let's go over incisment and excisment a little bit because it's an important concept uh, in biology. So you do have organism that undergo incisment. Is this the same word that I used? So when they go incisment, what happens during incisment? Metabolism slows down, right? Metabolism slows down and they form a wall, a cyst, they form a wall, a cyst wall, I should say that, made up of different things. The most common one is chitin. Uh, form a cyst wall around the um, cyst, for lack of better term. Uh, three, uh, reproduction. Um, stops or slow down. Okay, uh, inside of, of course, inside of cyst. So you do not have a cyst forming <coughs> a cyst. That does not happen. Maybe I should write it down. A cyst does not form. Another cyst. That doesn't happen. But inside of the cyst, nuclear division can occur without cytokinesis. Well, I talked about it. Uh, uh, Schizogeny and sporogeny, not schizogeny, sporogeny. That's an example. Uh, these two would be. inside of spores, nuclear division. Okay, can I erase that? I want to write down it. I want to be on the video as well, but anyhow. Um, so let's go over existing. Everybody wrote that. Let's go over existing. What is, ex what happens during existing? 
Okay, sporadically. During assessment, of course, exit. Um, exit. Okay, during assessment, uh, number one, the condition, condition of environment must be optimal. Rain supposed to be there, um, heat supposed to come back. You cannot have a frozen lake or pond or river and go through a system. That cannot happen. Okay, so the heat, rain, uh, food. Again, am I making some sense? I'm putting them all in there. Food, ample food must be there. <coughs> then, um, Oh, for insistment, I, another thing you write it down, they can stay in the environment for a long time. They can stay in the environment for, uh, for insistment. They can stay in the environment for a long time. Long time is a relative term. How long? Six months, year, two. So that's a relative term. Okay, then existment, uh, condition of the, of the environment must be optimal. Um, assist. get out and become uh, regular, normal organism. And then, of course, multiplication, multiplication, and metabolism. And then um, you should know as time goes on and we talk about different species, you should know an example of each one of them, what happened. As we said, paramecium, they do not undergo insistment, but per, uh, parasites and free living ones, uh, you should be able to put two columns and compare uh, some of the species with the insistment and insistment, what happens, uh, I hope, as time goes on. Okay, these are different phyla that you, you should uh, no, and uh, let's go over them quickly. Um, now, phylum amoeba zoa, we do have a slide of amoeba. You're going to get live one today, okay? But we do not have uh, entamoeba gingivalis, we do not have entamoeba histolytica, we do not have entamoeba coli. We do not have those. just the regular free living amoeba we have in the lab. And um, in the lab practical, I might put on the microscope what phylum it belongs if it belongs to phylum amoebozoa. Easy. Phylum apicomplexa, we do have it. Malaria. We have a slide of malaria, apicomplexa, and we'll talk about it. Uh, don't worry about class. Okay, our sospora, we have it in two by twos. Um, it's online, two by twos. Uh, you have the Toxoplasma gondii, we have it. Babesia, we do not have it. Cryptosporidium, we do not have it. Imeria, we do not have it. Plasmodium, we do have it. Okay, so these are the, sp uh, you can see these, and uh, we have these uh, in the lab. Phylum ciliophora, Balantidium coli, and Paramecium. Balantidium coli is parasitic. Paramecium is not, it's free living. Okay. On this one, Apicomplexa, every member of this phylum is parasitic. Where am I? Is that right? Uh, phylum Dianoflagellata, Serratium, we do have it. Okay, so they do have flagella. Uh, phylum uh, Diplomonata, Geordia, we do have it. Slide of Geordia. On the new DocuShare, this is the one in there, uh, but if you watch the iTunes video, it's the old classification, the old classification. And next time, when you go to YouTube, you want to watch these videos, it's going to be a different in a year or two or three, the new edition comes out. Phylum Euglenozoa, uh, don't worry about, again, the class. I don't expect, but uh, we have Euglena in the lab, slide of it. 
we have slide of trypanosoma, and we have slide of Nishmeni. Okay, both are devastating. They kill millions of people each year. Trypanosoma and Nishmeni. Uh, phylum foreign, I mean foreign. Phylum uh, uh, Heterolobrisia, uh, which is Nuclearia phalaride. We do have, you do have this on two by twos. This you have this in by two by twos. This you have a microscopic slide. Uh, phylum uh, Parabasalia, uh, Dantamoeba, you don't have a Trichomonas vaginalis. The only for the only protista I know that can be sexually transmitted from male to female. If male has, we'll talk about it later on, if male has it, there are no signs and symptoms. Females have signs and symptoms of it. But if male has a lot of it, then yes, the male have discharge and foul smell and so on and so forth. Okay. And trichonympha, we do have it, that's the mutualism. We do have spider of trichonympha. It's a uh, mutualistic relationship. The rest of them are parasitic. This is a parasite. 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 Free living. Parasite. Uh, free living. So uh, you should know them. As I said, parasite, free living. Uh, phylum uh, radiolaria, uh, we do have it. Make sure you do not confuse these two together when you look at them on a slide, microscopic slides. And uh, I think this is the last one. Uh, phylum uh, Veridi uh, plantiae, look like a plant. Uh, Climate monas, we do not have it, but we have ball box. Slide of ball box and live ball box. Ball box, you're going to get fit. Live ball box and live um, and uh, slide of microscopic slide of ball box. Chlamydomonas, we do not have it. We can get it. We can go to the pond and collect some pond water. There's some chlamydomonas in there. Those are the phyla of protista that we do have specimen of it, uh, and you should know them, um, so on and so forth. Phylum Eglinozoa, let's talk about this one a little bit. Uh, well, we'll finish this phylum, and then we take a break. We, we, we cover the rest of the phylum on Thursday. Today is Thursday. On Tuesday. Okay, so let's go. Uh, phylum Euglenidia, 